Boy, oh boy, do we have some good news for everybody here. Lula has now officially beaten Bolsonaro. He will be the next president of Brazil. He already was president of Brazil in the past. Now he will be president again. Uh, Common Dreams reports here. This is the yikesy part of it, but we all knew this was coming. Bolsonaro yet to concede as progressives worldwide celebrate Lula's win. So far, Bolsonaro has not called me to recognize my victory, and I don't know if he will call or if he will recognize my victory, Lula told supporters Sunday night. Uh, So Jake Johnson says the following, Progressives worldwide celebrated leftist Luiz Inacio Lula da Silva's victory Sunday in Brazil's presidential election as a major win for the climate, workers, and democracy itself, all of which were threatened by the policies and actions of far-right incumbent Jair Bolsonaro, who has yet to concede the race. Quote, six years ago, the coup against Dilma Rousseff ushered in a dark period in Latin, Latin America's largest country. DM25, a pan-European pro-democracy movement, said in a statement Monday, referring to the 2016 ouster of Lula's presidential successor and ally, quote, a darkness that deepened with the political imprisonment of Lula and culminated with the election of Jair Bolsonaro and the disastrous and criminal acts perpetuated or perpetrated by him during his presidency. Now... Brazilian people have chosen hope over fear and solidarity over hate, DM25 added. Lula's victory is one for the poorest, for women, for indigenous peoples, and ultimately for all of us around the world concerned with the protection of Brazil's invaluable ecosystems as part of the crucial fight against climate change. So um, this is one of the probably the most important issues for the world is that under Bolsonaro, he's like, yeah, fuck it. Go to town on the Amazon. Do deforestation all over the place. Um, don't care. And Lula is going to protect the Amazon. So this probably has, this may even have a bigger effect on climate change than even any, you know, whatever global agreements come to pass uh, within the next five or ten years. Because, you know, Bolsonaro could single-handedly do so much damage when it comes to the issue of climate change. And now Lula steps in and is not going to allow that. So that's huge. So let's go through some of the stuff that happened in real time here. So this was the moment that it happened. Um, This is when it was called for Lula. My reaction, of course, was Lula projected winner, down goals Bolsonaro. Um, Now again, Bolsonaro has already said, I'm going to pull a Trump and I'm going to say it's rigged if I lose. And so... As of right now, the recording of this segment, Bolsonaro hasn't said a single word yet, but look, I'm sure it's coming. I would be astonished if he doesn't pull a Trump. Um, And so another interesting development here is, you can see Ryan Grimm says this, Biden very quickly out with a statement congratulating Lula, a signal to Brazilian elite not to try anything funny. A truly strange moment, the U.S. working against a potential right-wing coup in South America. So... Uh, look, I was surprised by this. I, I did not know what the position of the Biden administration would be um, because the fact of the matter is Bolsonaro is very welcoming of Western capital. Um, and, but Lula, when he was president, he was uh, he's a leftist, but he's also very pragmatic. So he found a way to work with Western capital as well in a way that didn't make the West want to fucking coup him. OK, so. So it was an open question. It genuinely was an open question. Uh, Who will the U.S. government prefer? And will they be okay with Lula? Will they be okay with, you know, either outcome? And I, but I think what happened, and Crystal made this point, I think it's very accurate. She said, Bolsonaro's problem was he went all in, in a partisan sense, being very pro-Trump, very pro-Republican. And so since he picked a side in the U.S., this is almost like the Democrats in the U.S. going, okay, two can play that game, bitch. And so immediately congratulating Lula, that is a sign of like, yeah, don't try any funny stuff because we're not on your side, Bolsonaro, and the right in Brazil. Um, then, of course, right, right on time, baby. <laughs> this train is never late. We have um, Steve Bannon out there, uh, probably on Truth Social saying, this election was stolen in broad daylight, outrageous. Uh, Now, of course, the reality is, as I said, Lula was ahead in the polls literally the entire time. The entire time. He was never not ahead. Some polls had him up massively, others had him up maybe 
two percentage points, but he was never not ahead. Um, and again, I find it massively ironic that the people who scream and cry and bitch and moan about a rigged election, it's a stolen election, are literally trying to steal the election themselves. It's the classic trick of an authoritarian. It's, it's projection. It's accuse the other side of what you're doing. Um, so we also have that guy, Ali Alexander. This is a guy who uh, was at January 6th. He runs in far-right circles, and he's out there saying, in Brazil, the military has the right to insert itself into an election where there is suspected fraud. We must audit now. So in other words, look, they're rerunning the same fucking play here, okay, that they did in the U.S. This is a tweet from Lula last night. Absolutely glorious. Love to see it. Um, Trump, as Mac points out on Twitter here, Trump catches a fat L. Radical left lunatics and maniacs rise up. So here's what Trump said yesterday. This was before the results came in. To the people of Brazil, this is your big day and also a big day for the world. Your great and highly respected president, Jair Bolsonaro, needs you to get out and vote today so that your country can continue on its incredible path to success. Don't let the radical left lunatics and maniacs destroy Brazil like they have so many other countries. President Bolsonaro has done a fantastic job, has my complete and total endorsement, and deserves your vote. He will never let you down. Um, so, yeah. Uh, tell me how my ass tastes, old Donnie boy. And then, do we have anything else on... Oh, I, I know the remaining thing. Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell was the psychotic um, lawyer who tried to convince Trump that the election was stolen, you got to do something about it, you know, you should seize the voting machines, you, you should declare martial law. I mean, this is truly psycho dictatorship stuff here. And uh, by the way, she was also the person who pushed the dumbest conspiracies you can imagine. Um accusing one of the voting machine companies of working with Venezuela and flipping the vote to Biden, have Maduro flip the vote to Biden. And actually, I think some of these idiots were so dumb, they said Hugo Chavez rigged the voting machines and Hugo Chavez is fucking dead and has been dead for a while. So this is the kind of person that's now inserting themselves in. And um, now she's saying repeat of 2020 in the US. Yes, in fact, it is. It is a repeat of 2020. The 2020 election was legitimately won by Biden, and this election was legitimately won by Lula. So thank you for playing. Um, now, before I go any further, I'm going to get to, you know, the classic stuff about Bolsonaro in a minute, as I always do. I got to give you his record of his own quotes, the words out of his own mouth. I'll give you Bolsonaro in his own words in a minute. But let's remember here um, the facts about Lula, which I think explain why he won. Now, ultimately... I, the last time I saw the numbers was he was up by about 1.5 million votes, uh, which I think is like about a 1.5% um, win. And look, it is fair to say, and even when you, when you go to the lower elections, Bolsonaro's party is still right there. And in, in many respects, they overperform the polls. And so if you think this is just a crushing defeat for the far right full stop, that's not accurate. We're still in a, in a long-term battle here against a, a rising insurgent right wing. And it's ever since the right learned to start doing fake populism is when they became more popular and they've developed some sort of cultish following. Like Trump has a, a cult and Bolsonaro has a, a cult of his own. And so even though Lula won, it's not like, you know, thank God the fight is over. Now we can let our guard down. But I think there's a very clear reason why Lula won. If you deliver for voters, voters deliver for you. So when he was president, let me give you some facts about him. Um, Lula ran three times and lost before he won. So this is just a nice little fact for everybody who on the left who feels defeatist whenever our people lose. He ran three times and lost before he won. So that shows that, you know, you could always, could always be the comeback kid. Um, he decreased child malnutrition by 46%. He grew the middle class from 50% of the country to 73% of the country. He did a $40 billion housing initiative. He did a family allowance program contingent on schooling and stuff like, you know, sending your kids to the doctor. So it's kind of like a UBI type thing if you meet certain requirements. He spent billions on infrastructure and job creation. He lifted 20 million people in Brazil out of poverty. He was in a metal workers union and he led strikes. He substantially cut back deforestation. He turned a trade deficit into a surplus. Um, he's both 
ideologically on the left, but also pragmatic. So he was able to work with both Hugo Chavez and George W. Bush when he was president. Um, and he officially recognized Palestine as a state. This is just some of the stuff here. This is just some of the stuff about Lula that I find fascinating. And it shows you he materially delivered for the people of Brazil. So the people of Brazil delivered for him. Now, remember, at the same time that we get these facts, and it's probably because of these facts, there was a whole fake corruption scandal against him. And he ended up going down and going to prison over that fake corruption scandal. Well, massive credit to Glenn Greenwald, who did phenomenal reporting, which basically uncovered the fact that it was a fake corruption scandal. And he was able to get Lula out of prison. And now Lula is president again. So when you deliver for the people, the people deliver for you. Politics is not rocket science. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Um, all right. So now, of course, we'll end with the classic. This is a old school intercept article from right when uh, Jair Bolsonaro was elected. And here are some of his uh, phenomenal quotes over the years. I say phenomenal, of course, sarcastically. Quote, I am in favor of a dictatorship, a regime of exception. I wonder if this guy is going to gracefully exit. <laughs> I'm in favor of a dictatorship. Jesus Christ. Um, here he's talking about how, uh, he wants to solidify power in himself and not listen to the National Congress. Here we have another one where he says, um, torture works. I'm in favor of torture. You know that. And the people are in favor as well. Wonderful. Uh, through the vote, you will not change anything in this country. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It will only change, unfortunately, when one day we start a civil war here and do the work that the military regime did not do killing some 30,000, starting with the FHC, uh, starting with FHC, that's then President Fernando Henrique, Henrique Cardoso, Cardoso, not kicking them out, killing. If some innocent people are going to die, fine. In any war, innocents die. So he's in favor of political assassinations and murdering innocent people. Um, I will not fight nor discriminate, but if I see two men kissing in the street, I'll hit them. Very moral, very moral, upstanding guy we're talking about here. I'm a rapist now. I would never rape you because you do not deserve it, slut. I would not be incap- uh, Excuse me. I would be incapable of loving a homosexual child. I'm not going to start- I'm not going to act like a hypocrite here. I'd rather have my son die in an accident than show up with some mustachioed guy. For me, he would have died. If your son starts acting a little gay, hit him with some leather, and he'll change his behavior. Jesus Christ. Um then I think this is a claim here against an interracial relationship. Keep it classy. If a homosexual couple comes to live next to me, it will devalue my home. If they walk around holding hands and kissing, that devalues it. Jesus. Um, an interviewer asked him, are you proud of the story of Hitler's life? Uh, Bolsonaro says, no. Pride? I don't have, right? Interviewer says, do you like him? Uh, Bolsonaro says, no. What you have to understand is the following. War is war. He was a great strategist. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who fucking lost everything and got his ass clapped and put a bullet in his own brain. Great strategist. Great strategist. Um, have you ever hit a woman before? Quote, yes, I was a boy in El Dorado. A girl was getting in my face. Interviewer said, put her against the wall, a few taps, pa. He goes, no, well, no, I'm married. My wife isn't going to like this response. <laughs> got more on gay people. Seems to think about gay people a lot. Well, not, gays will not find peace, and I have congressional immunity to say that I'm homophobic. Yes, and very proud of it, if it is to defend children in schools. Oh, that sounds, that sounds similar, doesn't it? The whole, like, think about the kids in the schools. Oh, my God. That's why we have to be bigoted to protect the kids. I would not employ a woman with the same salary of a man, but there are many women who are competent. Oh, that's kind of a, the competent part, of course. <laughs> Beyond Brazil, above all, since we are a Christian country, God above everyone. It is not this story, this little story of a secular state. It is a Christian state. And if a minority is against it, then move. Let's make a Brazil for the majorities. Minorities have to bow to the majorities. The law must exist to defend the majorities. Minorities must fit in or simply disappear. So not only in favor of a fascist dictatorship, also a theocracy. Glorious violence is combated with violence. I went with my three sons. Oh, the other one went too. There were four. I have a fifth also. I had four men, and on the fifth, I had a moment of weakness, and a woman came out. So if, you're, if you uh, have a daughter, it's because you're a weak pussy. If I become president, there won't be any money for NGOs. These worthless people will have to work. If I get there, as far as I'm concerned, every citizen will have a firearm in their home. You will not have a centimeter demarcated for indigenous reserves. Um, so that's like their equivalent of, you know, we have Native American reservations here. 
It's like indigenous reserves for, for uh, native Brazilians. Has anyone ever seen a Japanese begging for charity? Because it's a race that has shame. It's not like this race that's down there or like a minority ruminating here on the side. So taking shots again at ethnic minorities in Brazil. Uh, keep it classy. The big problem in Brazil is that government is at the jugular of businessmen. Yeah, that's a problem. The worker will have to decide. Less rights and employment or all the rights and unemployment. I love that. So in other words, look, we can't do unions because it's just, you have to appease the gods of the market. You know, uh, I'm a market fundamentalist, so to appease the gods of the market, no unions. Um, I'll give carte blanche for the police to kill. Big yikes. Since I was, since I was single at the time, I used the money from my congressional housing stipend to get laid. Okay, that one I don't see a problem with, not gonna lie. <laughs> this group, if they want to stay here, will you have to put it itself... This group, if they want to stay here, will have to put itself under the law of all of us. Leave or go to jail. These red marginals will be banished from our homeland. Jesus Christ. Alright, anyway, this goes on. The guy's a total fucking psycho. Um, super far right. And we're all waiting for his response, which I'm sure is gonna be... Bad. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.